And good morning. So you're not saying double. I am here with the other PB. Yes, PB how are you? 1.0 and PB 2.0. And, and just and we all you know this is very reminiscent of our two pastor bobs on a microphone day yes. and i feel like we should put that disclaimer out that they're not logged into the gq channel or anything like that <laughs> you know we should have we talked before that we should have a a little sign that says no this is not brad pitt yeah. just in case it's just, just in case, in case. And then they think <laughs> I, can, I, I recognize that guy it's so, good to see you Brad. You as well. Greetings from central Wisconsin here in Wapaka. And you are in a little bit of uh, cold weather today. Well, you know, it's actually been decent. We're in the 30s right now. We are uh, 33, going to get up to 45. And if people are wondering, where's Wapaka? Um, it, if you look on a map, it's two hours north of Milwaukee, and we're right between Appleton and home of the Packers, Green Bay. Yes. Go Green Bay. Yes. So you are, but you're at a, in a place where you usually have severe weather. Yeah. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, our highs were negative five. So, yeah. you know, it's, it, it, we're, and we have currently about a foot of snow on the ground. Wow. Well, I've learned, you know, you and I talk often, Bob, and I've learned not to complain about our weather. And <laughs> well, you know, there is some sympathy there because Nashville is not equipped for that kind of snow. <laughs> not at all. Not even close. Huh? I accidentally drove through there once during a snow ice storm in March a couple of years yeah. ago, and it, you guys don't do it well. <laughs> no, 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 we don't. We were snowed in for gosh, five or six days. Yeah, just couldn't get out. Yeah, yeah, not so good. No, so, no. If you're joining us today, sign in. Let us know where you're from. Bob, I always love to know where people are watching from. It's we great. Can... It, there's a vast oh. amount of people from all over watching. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of nice to to do that. So, Bob, I'm drinking a little bit of our new blend here. And uh, this is the new Brood Awakening. Well, let, me, let me just say something about that. So when I was down at your place a couple of weeks ago for the gathering, yes. um, I brought home some of that brood awakening. The church I pastor, they all want to buy it. Most of the people were like, what is this? It just is, it, it, it really is that good. I'm not getting an endorsement for saying that. It literally is that good. Yeah, I, I think it's awesome. And uh, brood awakening is the name of it. There it is right there. And uh, it's re yeah, really, really good stuff. And of course, it's in in regular and uh, decaf and K cups. And but yeah, it's great stuff. Smooth coffee with cinnamon, graham, and nut flavors. And uh, good, good, good stuff. And the Bob, you know, picture, the guy in that picture kind of looks like Hacksaw Jim Duggan from the wrestling days. It, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so as always, all of our coffee and mugs and t-shirts and all of our stuff go to help support the ministries here at Sanctuary and we're really happy for that. Happy that um, this can be one of the those, you, you have good coffee and you're helping a good cause. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so Bob, we've got uh, Rex Carroll coming up in just a little bit. Yeah, that's exciting. White Cross. He's a good friend to both of us and mm -hmm. uh, Appreciate him a lot, and there he is. We'll yeah. um, we'll get to him in just a little bit. Um, I just had Rex at our church a few months ago. He he and uh, Glenn Kaiser did a blues jam together. Oh, how fun is that? Yeah, man, those two guys together are awesome. And you've got a concert coming up with them, don't you? We do. Yeah, uh, on February seventeenth. For those of you that are in the central Wisconsin area, check out uh, the show coming up. Uh, we have a smaller venue, but um, you know, there's there's no VIP tickets or anything in the size venue. Our churches, you will get to meet these guys personally, and yeah. uh, it's twenty bucks a ticket. So it, it, go go to that website you see on the screen and uh, get some tickets. Absolutely, good cause, good price, good night, <laughs> good mm -hmm. evening with good music. That's awesome, awesome, awesome. Well. 
Bob, we're um, we're just uh, a few days away from the next sanctuary gathering here. Yeah, uh, very excited for uh, this particular gathering Saturday and Sunday. Is liar, lunatic, or lord? A good C.S. Lewis quote there. And of course, uh, we start at 3 p.m. on uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday, and then of course the next morning, 9:30 a.m. And every Sunday now we're meeting at the storehouse. It's called 242 at the storehouse. 9:30 in the morning we're meeting and uh, just kind of sharing the word together. Teach, meet, eat, pray. Uh, great time. And, you know, it's been a really great time with the family here, just, you know, opening up the word of God, no frills. We have no worship. We have no announcements. We, we don't take offering. We don't do anything. We sit down and have Socratic discussion and study and talk. And uh, it's been really great. Yeah, I know that that was the big announcement when I was there last month was yeah. uh, actually earlier this month. And uh, now here's a little trip down this nostalgia lane, the liar, lunatic, and Lord, you and I, I remember seeing you in a picture at Cornerstone. You had that t-shirt from belly acres designs from Japuza. That's right. Remember it was like a brown tie dye thing. And I loved that shirt somewhere in your archives of photos on your Facebook page. You, there's a picture of you in that shirt. Is there? Yep. There might be. There probably might be. Yes. When, when I do my regular evening stockings of you, I find that picture, you know. <laughs> Here's yeah. a guy from, from Bundaberg, Rodney. Rodney from Bundaberg, yes. he That's, by the way, in Australia. So oh, wow. Australia. And Barry, our good friend, we like him very, very much from West Virginia. Great friend of the ministry. Dragon Pockets, and uh, from our one of our friends in the UK, um, Dragon Pockets. Hmm. I had never thought, do dragons have pockets? We have to think about yes. that. Yes. Garrick McGowan, uh, another good friend of the ministry, and uh, from Norfolk, Virginia, and again, some of these guys, you know, go way, way, way back with sanctuary. Mm -hmm. I would, I would just encourage anybody that is seeing the advertisements for those gathering meetings at your place. Yeah. Um, for the metal, for the Christian metalheads that don't live nearby, that can't make it out to all those, do what I do, and try to get to at least one a year. I mean, it is a time you won't regret. It's, it's kind of like a pilgrimage to be able to, I and mean, you're going to rub shoulders with. Uh, pillars of the Christian metal movement and um, everyone from Glenn Man Caruso to Jim Laverty and Jamie McKay, they're all there. Luke Easter from Tourniquet. And you guys are all just enjoying a meal together. And I, yeah. I would highly encourage that if you can swing it, get there at least once. You, you, you won't regret it. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And I think that's a good idea. So Steve Williams is here. He says, good morning from the Michigan. <laughs> really appreciate your series of talking about church and religion old wounds. I don't even call myself a Christian because of it. I'm a Christ follower, no religion. So, Bob, I've been going through, um, actually, we finished yesterday, uh, going through a series on healing from organized religion. Hmm. And, you know, there are a lot of people that are um, casualties of organized religion and they they don't feel like they can go back into a church there's a lot of healing they've they've been sold they feel like they've been sold a bill of goods and they have trying See, to believe things that aren't true now there's something i can't relate to 27 years of being a pastor i've never been hurt by the church you know <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Actually, actually, I wrote two books on the very topic. So, yes, I can relate that. It is a good series that you're going through and very, very much needed. Yes. And, Bob, you're on the other side of that. You get people that that come to your church who have been wounded from others. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we, we do get a lot of people that are wounded by others. I've taught uh, 
workshops, seminars from from the old Cornerstone Festival to there's a thing in Wisconsin called Life Fest where they bring me in to talk about surviving church politics and yes. recovering from spiritual abuse. And that is a very needed topic. And, you know, it's uh, one of those things that, you know, I, I, I would humbly admit being this side of the pulpit, you know, uh, as a pastor of a church, I'm I'm probably pretty sure inadvertently caused some of that, you know, but it's still never okay to uh, to uh, have to experience that in a church body. And so we, yeah. we can relate with you. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's difficult. Bob, I always say the church is messy at best. Yeah. At best. Messy yep. at best. You know, you know it's, it's messy at best. And, you know, whatever your church is, whether it's the 242 gathering or a home group or whatever, um, it's never going to be perfect, you know, and I, I've always liked that one saying that if you ever find the perfect church, don't go because you'll ruin it. Yeah. You know, it's but pretty that, good. Yes. David Wh Kelly White is with us. Good hey, friend. David, he watches our Sunday morning shows. Yes. David's from Littleton, Colorado. So, Bob, you know, there is a great commission that Jesus gave us right before he took off in the clouds. And uh, and it really has to be a mandate for for things happening uh, from that time forward. And what he's asked us to do, yeah, it's in Matthew twenty eight. I just want to read it real quick, starting with verse nineteen. And many of you know the scripture by heart. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Hmm. So he gave us a mandate. He said, go and preach the good news, the gospel. And uh, he didn't say go and put people in bondage. He didn't say go and, and teach uh, uh, things that don't really pan out. He said, preach the gospel, the real yeah truth the love of jesus christ the gospel and um and i i just think we miss the mark so many times by by talking about so many things that aren't relevant beating people up every week when they come to to uh, church fellowships or religion fellowships i almost don't want to call it church because by definition church means people by you know christian people gathered together to celebrate their faith in jesus christ yeah so a, a true church does that and organized religion is different michael goble good friend of the ministry good morning he says and blessings from west chicago chicago my, yeah. one of my favorite skits on saturday night live were the super fans that talked about the bears and the bulls and uh he, uh, the, the one guy says, yeah, we, we're talking about a certain coach Ditka from a certain city that starts with a C, ends with an O, and has a hick hag in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's good. Great. That is great. Well, another fellow Tennessean here says, um, and Becky says she was born in Milwaukee. Hey, that's where I was born. Yeah. You guys St. Joseph Hospital. There you go. Well, and uh, you know we've we've got an, an implant from Milwaukee here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have many people in your churches who are deconstructing their faith because of life experiences with church body? That's all we have, I think, pretty much. You know, Frank. I, I think it was Frank Viola. Um, he wrote a book that I would encourage all the listeners to read is called pagan Christianity mm. and um, yeah. talks about our roots in the church coming today to today. But he said, when, when somebody has been so hurt and devastated by the church, now this is, it's a little touchy, but it, it makes a whole lot of sense when you stop to think about it. He actually encourages people to go through a bit of an atheistic phase. In other words, dial back everything you've been taught, re-enter as a new Christian learning from the ground up. And that's going to cause a little bit of that atheistic stage, but you're, you're basically rebuilding the regain a deeper understanding of who God is and what this is all about. Absolutely. And Bob, 
let's just recommend that book for a minute. It's really one of my favorite books. Yeah. I I think he defines so many people and uh, brings such great uh, great healing to so many people in this. I, I this tell you what, that church. that church was like a, that book was like a bomb went off in a lot of churches. It was just. It, it shook up everything, you know, and but it's so good. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Gary Flory, good friend of the ministry. Good morning from Columbus. Sad that over the years I've dealt with and counseled with a good number of those burnt by the church. Thank God for his grace and mercy that they realize God still loves them. And, you know, that's such an important part, isn't it? It is. If there's any message we have to bring, and the first step of healing is God loves you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Jesus said that was the most important thing. And then, Bob, you talked about reconstructing your faith. Yep. We, we almost do that by, first of all, realizing what the most important part of our faith is, and it's unconditional love. It is. That it was the greatest commandment the Bible from beginning to end is a love story. And when you begin to see the Bible in maybe a little different light than you've heard it preached, um, mm -hmm. a healing, a very much a healing thing. And, and reconstruction, reconstructing your faith does take a lot of effort and a long time because, you know, we're brought up, you know, I'm brought up with the assembly of God bias and people are brought up with EV free and whatever. And yeah, when right. that's part of your foundation, you're shaking that foundation and that's not an easy thing, but you got to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I had coffee with a, a real good friend of mine yesterday and uh, he's, uh, his church is still AG, but um, he was a pastor for decades before he really found life in Christ. Mm. Um, quite a story. But um, he he went from churchianity to, um, to a real faith in Jesus Christ. And I think in a lot of movements, not just AG, but in a whole lot of church movements, there's a, an awakening. Yeah. There's something happening. AB says now post-deconstruction is happening. And uh, yeah. We have all these words, mm -hmm. these terms, but it, it, let's just say there's a lot of shaking up going on. Yeah. Yeah. whole lot of shaking going on. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's, well, and I've shared this quote with you before, you know, and sometimes that's, you know, shaking up can be good for the pastor. It can be good for the church and could be good for the congregants as well. Yes. Um, as one pastor said, we went through a great time of revival. And another pastor said, oh, please tell me all about it. He goes, we lost 200 people. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I love that. And when you think about it, it's like, you know, sometimes people, sometimes revival happens by that crowd leaving so that the church can actually flourish. So, yeah, yes. it can be looked at both ways, I guess. Yeah, man, that's, I love that. And, you know, sometimes just like you said, pulling way back and starting over. Yeah. Such a healing thing. Absolutely is. Well, Bob, what else is going on there? You've got a great concert coming up. Well, your, your church is televised on the Sanctuary Network. Um, yeah. You guys are, are Sunday mornings. They can tune in and watch the, the, uh, the family there in Waipaca. Yeah, I mean, and you've been here quite a few times, and um, yeah, we we start at uh, 10 a.m. Central Time, and I usually come on with my message about 10:35. But you know, again, we're we're a church that's you know 50 people, 60 people. It's not a big church. We're in a rural community, but uh, we do enjoy bringing a lot of concerts. We just had the protest in and Blue Fire Horizon. Uh, those of you that are on the metal uh, forum, you know all about Blue Fire Horizon and their memes. <laughs> and uh, um, but uh, we've had everyone from John Schlitt to Matthew Ward at our church, and it's um, uh, we actually have two more book that they asked if they could play our church is uh, Ignescent, and then there will be Chaotic Resemblance coming in, both of them in April. So uh, yeah, it's we so we like. We like to have a good time up here. 
Chaotic Resemblance. I love those guys. Yeah, and they're playing Immortal Fest. You know, they remind me of uh, Disciple in the old days. Hmm. They've got that same intensity, the same kind of teaching, preaching. Yeah. The same, yeah, they're just great at it. I love those guys. I think, uh, if I remember right, they're going to, when you're at Immortal Fest, they're one of the bands that are going to be playing. They are. And I want to get them involved in our Sunday service. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. Immortal Fest this year, the first one, which is in July, uh, we have Sanctuary Day. Two days of concerts, Friday and Saturday. Sunday is Sanctuary. And we'll have a full service, a full worship band, uh, special guests, all kinds of stuff. Kind of a, there it is. Um, it's going to be a great time. And look at all the bands that are playing at this one, too. I like that they've mixed it up quite a bit with older stuff and newer groups. Yeah, it is. And Theocracy uh, playing, you know, along with Human Code and Deliverance, and Spoken. Of course. I got I to ask you, how excited are you as the grandfather of Christian Metal to see STB playing there, Stop the Bleeding? Yeah, I am so excited. I've been chatting with these guys, and of course, these are some of the old tourniquet guys. Yeah. And... uh you know, Luke, uh, the, the old singer for Tourniquet, is doing the vocals and along with Gary Lanier and the guys. And uh, Luke is part of our fellowship here. Yeah, Guy um, Ritter will even be there. Yeah. Yes. Guy will be there. T- will be in- doing it, too. So I, so much history. You know, so many good times with that band. And, you know, I, I'll share some of my personal memories also of Ted Kirkpatrick, you know, I just think we've got, we uh, we celebrate his life. He's no longer with us, but um, just what a genius mm. when it came to music. And I, I remember, you know, I played um, on one of their songs called Skizik's Dilemma um, on one of the albums. And I went into the studio, we were in the recording studio, and uh, Ted's the one that, that jumped on a guitar and he said, here's what I'd like it to sound like. And he played it on the guitar. <laughs> I learned it on the keyboard. And of course it became a uh, skeezix dilemma, but he was good at just about every instrument. And, and uh, we, we miss having him around. Um, but I'm so glad the guys are putting this together. And I think all the, the old tourniquet fans are totally going to love this. Yeah. I'm, I'm, kind of geeking out over it because I, uh, I'm going to be going to part two because the band that got me started in all the Christian rock and metal stuff that I've started listening to was shout and they're yeah. playing there. But, um, the, I'm my, the, my biggest, my favorite band is, is tourniquet. And, um, yeah. that all started, I met Ted, uh, Kirkpatrick and actually I was staying at your cabin, um the day the night that we got the bad news about ted's passing i remember coming into your your room that morning and it was yeah. just a, a shock but i was working at a christian bookstore in milwaukee as a music buyer and this guy walks in and he's returning two cassettes that he got for christmas called hymns triumphant <laughs> and oh, wow. he, i'm like he goes i i just don't really need this or want this and you know, hoping to trade it in for something else. And of course yeah. that's Milwaukee. He's from, his family's from the Kenosha area or yeah. thereabouts, Waukesha. And um, I'm like, I, I got to ask you, you look very familiar. And he, then he introduced himself and we just became good friends from there on out. It was, it was, yeah. he was a great guy. Yeah. And I, I was actually at his house there hmm. um, when right before he uh, joined Tourniquet, you know, it was, it was just Guy and Gary and um, went there with Caesar. Um, we had um, Intense Records and just, you know, talking about the things in the future and joining the band and, and the whole tourniquet thing. We had signed actually tourniquet before Ted was even in the band and there before there was a singer. Wow. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, when I came down to Immortal Fest last year, um, Gary Lanier and I, we've, we chatted quite a bit and we ended up having lunch together at Sweetwater where he's a rep for Fender. Oh, yeah. And, uh, he, uh, blessed me with a, and I 
paid to get it framed and everything. Uh, their, their original poster for Metal Blade Records with all the original bandmates signing it and everything. So, yeah, that hangs in my church office. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And you got and you had uh, let's see, you were there with uh, Jimmy Brown too. Yeah, we bumped into Jimmy as in Sweetwater. It's just kind of a reunion of friends there. Hmm. And, that, and that's what this metal movement is about. I mean, yeah. you say we are metal, we are family, and you know, we all stay in touch online and everything, but it's like when you see somebody in person, there's a little bit of uh, shock and awe, and you know, honestly, a little bit of fanboying going on because <laughs> you've uh, we've listened to these bands. But you just pick up where you left off online and your family. I love that. I love that. There is that sense of camaraderie. And, and you know, when we started using this moniker, Bob, we are metal, we are family. It's not just a catchy slogan. It's really the truth. It is it is true. And if, if again, if somebody's never been to a mortal fest or um, we experienced it at the old Cornerstone Festival, but even at the gathering at the storehouse there in Mount Juliet, it, you don't fully grasp what that means until you're immersed in it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Once again, I want to say, folks, if you're joining us, um, that happens this weekend. Saturday and Sunday is the next gathering. And uh, we're excited to... I, I have some things I want to share from my heart. Our worship band, Jim Liberty and all the guys will be in girls. We'll be um, doing some cool music, but again, it's teach, meet, eat, pray. We got some great food, also, and you know, it's a lot easier to um, to study the Bible when you have good food to study it with, both spiritually and physically. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway, that's coming up this weekend, and then every Sunday at nine thirty in the morning, we have. Uh, our 242 at the storehouse, our morning um, Bible study, Socratic discussion together. So if you're in the area or would like to be, remember these events. You're always welcome. And there's, uh, if you need to get more information, the address, all that kind of stuff, just um, contact Pastor Todd. It says right there. Todd Bow at SanctuaryInternational.com, and he'll get that to you as well. Well, Bob, we've got an exciting second uh, second half hour, second part of the program. Yeah. We have um, a very special guest here with us. Yep. That's very shortly. And, uh, Bob, we got a lot of things to talk about, some stuff for the future. Uh, excited to see what's going on with White Cross as Rex begins to share some of that stuff with us. It really, I mean, over the last few years, I've really seen a resurgence and it's, yeah. it's exciting. Yes. Well, folks, stick with us. We'll be right back after this short message. Makes me want coffee. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> my my uh, my my Dunkin' cup runneth empty, and I don't have anything else now. Uh oh, well, I have my my Pastor Bob mug here. Yep, it's my my mug with the mug on a mug. There you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and of course you can get all of the sanctuary bling. We got a lot of it, and. Uh, some of our 
favorite sanctuary people. My nephew is there, my nephew, Justin, and also Michael, Todd Bowe's son is there. And we've got, uh, but they're wearing some really cool stuff. So we got yeah. the threads, we got the coffee, we've got the mugs, we've got posters right there, sanctuarynational.com or wearemetalwearefamily.com. And you can get it there. Well, we have a special guest today. Um, he is uh, probably needs no introduction to this crowd. He's been around for a while, and he's um, still extremely active. And I want to talk to him about that too. But let's bring Rex Carroll into the mix, and uh, we're excited to have him here with us. Do we have Rex there? Uh, it looks like he's not on yet. Not yet. Okay. All I sent right. him a message, and I see that he saw it, but... Okay. Yeah. Well, he should be on shortly. And Bob, you and I always have things to talk about. Well, you know what I'm thinking about Rex is maybe he went from hair metal to goth and now he's not able to get up so early in the morning. Uh, see, that might be it. That yeah. Be Rex, it. And <laughs> Rex and Savior Machine together again. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Sonny is here and Barry lost... I have a name for my podcast, either Iron Cross or Bloodbot. I like both of those. Barry's going to start doing a podcast. That'll be cool. You could, uh, my, my mind with Iron Cross comes, you know, there's a lot. I know like in Wapak and probably small towns all across the U.S., there's, as they say, smithies, you know, people, yes. uh, iron workers, you know, and they can forge stuff. And I think they could come up with some pretty cool designs for that name. Absolutely. That's very cool. Angela is here. She says it's hoping to come and visit soon. So, folks, if you're joining us, would you let us know where you're from? Whether you're on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're watching from, you can just write it in the comments there and we'll put it on the screen. And, uh, Bob, it's so great to have people from all over the world. I saw the, the Philippines. I saw Puerto Rico. We didn't... Uh, weren't able to acknowledge a few of them as we were going there, but yeah. we have uh, a whole lot of people from around the world. I, have a, I actually have an aunt and uncle that live in the Philippines. So oh, my Mary. aunt married a Filipino and they started a, a Bible Academy up in the mountains of it's called Baguio city. So yeah. Yes. They've right. been there 40 some years. That is awesome. Kenny's here from Staten Island, New York. Let me, let me, let me, this Staten Island guy, Kenny. Okay. So they have, and, and Kenny could probably speak to this, but they have, I'm not a guitarist. I'm not a musician, but my brother and I, we went, took our, took my youth group there for a back to school trip to New York. We stopped there. There's a place called the Mandolin Brothers. I don't know if you've ever heard of that or not, but it's the first time I've ever picked up a guitar that was valued at $40,000. It's just a fantastic place. Wow. Yeah. Forty thousand dollars. Isn't that something? And and the strings felt the same as a ten dollar guitar. But what do I know? <laughs> That's amazing. Well, we have our friend here from South Africa. Nice. Uh, one of our sanctuary people, um, actually from Denmark, just went to South Africa to visit the folks there, and brought back some great reports. Greg Manier is here with us. Hey, Greg. Good to see you, Greg. Greg I has meet Greg at one of your get-togethers. Yeah, um, was with the Crucified and now Applehead and the new Applehead album, folks. You got to get it. Good, good stuff. And Greg's a good friend here in the ministry. Drew is here from Florida. All right, you, Drew, a Floridian. Folks, <laughs> if you're joining us, sign in and let us know where you're from. That's half of the fun, isn't it, Bob? It is Elgin. Elgin. There you and go, Elgin, Illinois, and uh, he's that's a whole there. other country, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Rex will be online shortly. Well, there we go. All right, White Cross Social. He's getting all beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> well, and can you get more beautiful than Rex? I know. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> The Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Nice. Beautiful area. It is an incredibly beautiful area. So I, I think metal heads and wrestling kind of go hand in hand. And I didn't realize this until I <clears throat> got to 
uh, until I found out. But one time after we left your house, we rolled through Knoxville, Tennessee. And one of the most relatable and uh, government officials that you can get in touch with over there in Knoxville, the, their mayor is Don Jacobs, I think it is. But mm. for you wrestling fans, that's Kane, the big red machine. And uh, yeah. He's like the most relatable guy. You can just like email him or whatever. So that's kind of a fun fact in that's the Smoky awesome. Mountain area. Yes. Well, there's a whole Glenn lot. Jacobs. Of- there you yeah. go. Thanks, John. Yeah. There's a huge lag for Twitch messages. Just hmm. so you're aware. Well, that's weird, isn't it? I don't know why that is. Must be Twitch on, on Twitch. Yes. The winter state of Michigan. Kevin and right. Kevin not having as much winter as you usually do either. Bob, a lot of your lakes that you're used to doing, you know, driving the truck on the lake and doing ice fishing and all that, you can't do that right now. No, the, the so I'm actually at my office here at Foundations for Living, which is a nonprofit faith based crisis center, and we have a lake just across the street and it's open, there's no ice, so it's crazy. That, that's unheard of. There it is. is. Yeah. Bob, tell us just a little bit about what you do there. You're, you don't just pastor the church, you run this other organization. Yeah. So it's, you can go to fflwapaca.org to see it, but um, it's a faith based uh, crisis center. And <clears throat> we work in collaboration with the Salvation Army. And uh, besides passing the church, I was asked to be a board member here and six months later became the executive director. And um, you know, we help people with financial assistance, utility um, assistance, rental assistance. We have a homeless shelter just down the side of that wall um, that uh, runs through the winter months here. And we have a thrift store, one of the best ones in our city. And um, people, it's open to the public, but we also give out vouchers to people in need. And then we also have, um, we had a house donated to us. Wow. and. Um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. And we did a $230,000 renovation on it. Um, and it's just about ready to be open, but that's going to be our city's first, um, women's, uh, shelter lodging house where we're going to coach them to get jobs and help them navigate life and provide a, a room at this place until they're fully on their feet again. So, it's a very rewarding job. It's not a far cry from what I already do as a pastor with out- outreach and helping. So it's it's a it's a great place. But yeah, it's worth checking out. Doing some really great stuff. That's awesome, Bob. So my good friend Peter Stendlin from Sweden is Peter. there. I've stayed at his house many times uh, in in Sweden. Um, in PTO, Sweden, way up north. Where the sun doesn't come up in the winter and it doesn't go down in the summer. It's way up north there. <laughs> and uh, he said, hi, Bobos. There but you he's go. works a lot with Rex Carroll. Rex has been there many times, too, and they've they've collaborated and done a lot of things together. Um, Peter has a band called Laudamus, and he's doing some other things now. But, man, the Laudamus albums, if you can get a hold of any of them, are just awesome. Stephen is here from West Virginia also. He says, um, love White Cross since day one. Mm -hmm. You both. Yes, absolutely. And Harvey is here from St. Clairsville, St. Clairsville, Ohio. Now, where is St. Clairsville, I wonder, in relation to uh, Versalis? I'm not sure. We'll have to find that out. Rex will be shouting out the full album, so I don't want to steal his thunder. <laughs> there you go. Cool. White Cross. So um, Rex will be here soon. We're awaiting his arrival. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like when you're a kid, you're waiting for Santa Claus to come. Right. For Rex Carroll. <laughs> Just like the same feeling. It, I, don't, I don't know if he'd appreciate me sitting on his lap asking him for what I want, though. He he probably would appreciate it. I know probably. well. Hopefully, <laughs> he's up for anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. So, folks, if you're just joining us, would you sign in and let us know where you're watching from? We would love to know that. 
And, uh, you know, Bob, one of the exciting things for me is to realize how big this family is. Mm, yeah. So, and we have people, you know, heavy metal friends and Christian metal in places you wouldn't even know. One of the biggest groups is in Mumbai. Wow. In India, you know, love those guys. And all over the world, Kenya, places where you wouldn't expect anything to be happening. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it keeps growing, you know, uh, for those of us that are part of that, the um, Christian metal forums on Facebook, um, it's interesting because every day there's new people coming on board saying, I'm, I've been listening to this, but can you give me a Christian alternative that sounds like that? You know, it's, it's the daily thing. You know, there's new people coming into the Christian metal movement all the time. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm also a part of the Christian metal forum and, if you will go to our website, uh, we have a whole section there that is about bands. And you can say, I want a band that sounds like this, and it's there. You can look at um, at metal from different genres. You see the band, you can see what they look like, you can hear what they, what they sound like, you can have mm -hmm. a basic bio of all of them. All of that information is there on the website. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, and, uh, and it's a, it's a legit uh, chart, you know, back in the day when I worked in the Christian bookstores, um, different record labels, star song and stuff would issue those little charts out and says, if you like Metallica then listen to Petra and you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. but, you know, our friend Dave Hart put those together. He's the one that did that. Okay. In the day, Al Mancone Ministries. There you, you go. That? Well, I, I, I have good authority that uh, Rex is around now. Okay, well, let's bring him on. Hi, guys. Hey. Good to see you, my friend. It's good to see you, too. He's got the white beard like Santa, you know. Oh, I know. Well, you know, uh, you know, I'm just going for that Pastor Bob look. There you go. <laughs> well, you mean the Brad Pitt look. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, whatever it is. Damn. Yes. You know, Angel will do that to you. <laughs> totally. This, my friends, is the sign of experience. Yes. So, yeah. kids. <laughs> so, Rex was actually born with a guitar in his hands. That's right. Uh, and it's pretty much your MO, isn't it, dude? It's my MO. Well, you know. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess. You know, it's just uh, some things just are. That and mm. it are. And you don't you don't question it or just think differently. It just it is what it is. Yes. And I show up. I, that's a, a rule that was taught to me like a long time ago. You just show up. You bring your guitar wherever you go, and that's how it is. Yes. So, Rex, you um, you don't let any grass grow under your feet. You you guys have you got some new projects. You've got a lot of traveling. You you haven't uh, you haven't slowed down much. Uh, well, like yourself, I uh, I'm I'm pretty convinced of what my calling is and what my role is and what my job is and what the mission is and where we've been and where we're going. So there's just you know there's a timeline from A to Z and. It's it's really it's a it's a blessing to 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 have a good to to be strong in your convictions about where you are and who you are and who you're supposed to be. Yes. And, you know where you've been, where you are now, and where you're trying to go to. So, mm. I think that's awesome. Tell us what's going on with White Cross these days. I I know that you've got a whole lot of fans that are watching right now. Well, um, you know, specifically later in a little bit, we'll get we'll get to our upcoming gig at uh, Radiant Fellowship that's coming up. I'm sure you guys have talked about that. Uh, so along the way to to that, uh, since since 2019, we've gone through a time of transition. Yeah. Um, Scotty, God bless him. Uh, wish him all the best. Um, love him to pieces. He's He's more or less retired. He's in uh, Cleveland, Tennessee, doing well. 
And uh, the mission of the band is to keep going. And we have brought in David Roberts. Um, I heard you guys talking a little bit before about uh, bands that sound like other bands from back in the yeah. day. Uh, and, you know, of course, back in the day, the, the, the comparison was always, oh, yeah, White Cross sounds like Rat because we had yeah. right. that uncanny resemblance to Stephen Beersy. And the really cool thing with that was that it was it was genuine and authentic. Uh, he never listened to Rat. I did. I knew what it sounded like, and I thought, well, that's really cool. If somebody likes that band, it gives them a, a starting place to sort of get a handle on what they can expect from a White Cross album. But I I think I I also by the same token I like to think that after the first or second album we kind of outgrew that comparison. We kind of yes. We started to travel down our own path. Now with David Roberts coming into the band, this has been, man, what a tremendous blessing in so many ways. Uh, Dave is an incredible vocalist and he's an incredible human being and love him to pieces. And, um, and he's given given me new life as a guitar player and as a songwriter and um is uh he's multi-dimensional as far as uh, his artistic ability to interpret songs in in a new way and um a lot of depth there and um we were over in Germany uh, last October at the Loud and Proud Festival, and yeah, and um, the Petra guys were were telling me they were telling me is oh this is like by far you know the best uh, version of the band that we've seen. Oh, hmm. awesome! Um, and so they they were they were excited for us, and and. Um, yeah, I, I would say in the last year that uh, uh, my friendship with with the Petras and uh, with the keyboard player uh, John Lowry that has that has been influential for me. It's it's kind of helped me solidify a few things as far as you know, just uh, conviction of the path that that I'm on and that the band is on, and you know, we want to reach the world with the gospel and. Um, I guess, you know, uh, you get to a certain point. I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I want to do well. I want to I want to have a, a record on the charts and all that kind of stuff. Um, all that stuff is nice. And and of course, you know, we need the popularity so that we can sell some albums so that I can pay the light bill. You know, all that stuff is important. And and uh, your heavenly father knows that you need these things. Yes. So. Uh, but that's not really, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's not really what makes it exciting anymore because, um, you know, if we're going to be real, I probably have more, uh, I have more miles in the rearview mirror than as far as what's in front of me, but I do have a lot of miles in front of me left to go, and I'm very excited for, for what's coming up, and I'm very excited to uh, just bring the gospel to my generation and to new generations and yeah. want to just really see uh, revival in this country because, you know, as you know, with the politics of where we are in America today, it's like the whole country is going down the tubes. <laughs> so what's yeah. going to stop that is not, is not any politician or anything like that, but, yeah. um, but people coming under the lordship of Jesus Christ, that that is the only thing that's really going to bring America Absolutely. together and bring us, you know, and, and we should be doing that as as Christian believers. You know, we are the ones who should set the bar. This is culture, uh, the, the way that we perceive it. And, you know, that's so we're the, we're the gold standard that the rest of the world should be looking at. That's how absolutely, absolutely, and you know, I've on a lot of things there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I, you know, we've we've got a lot of um, we've got a lot of miles ahead, as you said, and there's and 
Rex, you know, you and I have traveled a lot internationally and we've, we've had White Cross play at some of the festivals in Europe. And, you know, it's, um, it's a family. I mean, wherever you travel, there are metalheads that are part of the family that are doing this kind of ministry along with us. I mean, we're not the only ones involved, but we're definitely on the front lines and there's a, uh, it's a really important time to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to uh, a very evil world. And I, I, I use that term because I think things are getting evil. And the Bible says that in the last days, you know, things will become a little more evil and they really are. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a fight between, um, between good and evil, I think in a lot of ways. You just, now here's a good segue. You have an album coming up called Fear No Evil. <laughs> oh, Fear No Evil, right. <laughs> I just realized that, boy, here's a perfect segue. Uh, and it's, the album. it's such a great song. It just comes from the 23rd Psalm. And, and uh, yeah, you know, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yes, uh, love that. The artwork is phenomenal. Yeah, that's really good. That is from our beautiful friend uh, Wendell Wright, who uh, does the uh, the Junk Henry uh, custom furniture store out there in uh, out near Kansas City. But uh, right. he is an incredible furniture builder and artist uh, and photographer. He's won won awards for his photography and. He's a good friend of, of ourselves and uh, also with Chaotic Resemblance and some of the some of the other bands. Yes. And uh, he helps a lot of people. That's and, awesome. Uh, he does. He's helped. He's been a tremendous friend to myself. Yeah. And, and to White Cross. And, you know, he's a he's a friend to uh, he's a friend to all friends of White Cross. You know, he just. <laughs> Awesome. Just a just a great guy, and he's helped us with uh, all, a lot of visual images, and he's done a lot of our T-shirt designs. And uh, well, he's incredible. incredible. Yeah. Love him to pieces. So Rex, people can pre-order, and if we can put that on the screen again, John, uh, the QR code is there, and you can snap that pre-order to the album. Yeah, uh, the release is when Rex. Yeah, as March twenty second, it's okay. coming out. Uh, and it will be available worldwide. And Great. Dark Star wow. Record Label is is a record label. And, uh, Very exciting. Yeah, looking, looking, looking forward to hear hearing a few of those uh, new songs at the concert coming up. Yes, Let's talk about that. Sure. Um, you were going to be our, as part of our mandate is to go out and play live, right? Yeah. So, uh, Bob, I believe that you had contacted me uh, about because uh, I've I've been up to uh, Radiant Fellowship in Wapaka a couple times. I've been there by myself. I've been there with Glenn Kaiser, and so I think you called me and said, "Let's come up and and have the band." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. by by all means, let's do it." So uh, we are coming, um, and what is the date on that? I believe it's February, uh, February 17th. 17th. February 17th, yes. <clears throat> we'll yep. see you with bells on. You know, one of the questions I get um, is, is there going to be a chance to meet the artists? And I, I jokingly say, you know, with the venue our size, you're guaranteed to meet the artists. <laughs> <laughs> right. You'll see us. Uh, you'll see us out in the parking lot, loading gear in. <laughs> you'll see me walking across the parking lot with a guitar case in hand. There you go. <laughs> exactly. That'll be a great time. It's twenty dollars a ticket. They can order online at radiantfellowship.net. And uh, yeah, it's looking forward to it. We. Uh, I just spoke to somebody yesterday. They uh, got their tickets, and they just were confirming that it went through, and they're getting ready to book their hotel. Then. Yeah, and uh, a couple. Uh, a couple friends of mine just uh, texted me like a few days ago and said, yeah, I'm coming to see you in Wapaka. And I'm like, all right, all right. And you know, Wapaka is a great place because I'm from the Chicago area and 
Uh, well, when I was when I was very young, uh, my family lived in near Cincinnati, and every summer we used to make the trek up to. This is like just my personal thing. When I was a little kid, our family used to go up to the Chain Lakes in Wapaka, and we would spend time up there. It was like a summer tradition. Mm -hmm. so I just have uh, just lifelong fond memories of being in the area. Yeah, and our, I know our church and the times you've been up there, they they love you. So, yeah, and, and yeah. I love them, and you know, can't wait to get out and hang out with everybody. And that's the, that's yeah. the thing about you know, on a playing playing guitar and playing music for me is is uh, it's nice to be in the studio and to make a new record, but really, you're making music for people. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when I get a chance to play the songs um, for an audience and to interact with people and, and get the reactions back from people, that is, is an amazing, it's, a, it's an amazing exchange that happens. Yes. And it's, that's, you know, that's one of the rewards for me is just having that interaction with the fans who come out to see it. And it's amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you've got some great things coming up this year, Rex. And and folks, um, if you're not part of the White Cross um, website, make sure you go there. Yeah. Uh, it's right here. Uh, Whitecrossband.com. <laughs> we used to be whitecross.com uh, back in the early days, and we didn't know we were so green behind the ears. We didn't know, know about... Uh, things like uh domain hosting and oh, all yeah. that kind of hey. stuff and we you know we get some strange looking bill in the mail for 400 bucks for the next three years like what what is this and we didn't know what it was we didn't pay it so you know so <laughs> we've been yeah. through the ringer a few times uh ex experience is the best teacher <laughs> it totally is yeah so rex we've got a couple minutes left okay you You've, um, our good friend Peter Stenler yes. is watching right now. He just Hello, left. Peter. Love you, my friend. We've had so many amazing times in Sweden. Yes. Uh, and I've had the, the opportunity and the privilege of running up and down the whole entire length of the country. We've been all the way as far as the Finland. Upper Finland border. Oh, hang on, guys. You have an Apple phone. I had a phone call coming It's, it, it's a domain host uh, requiring payment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a sound that is known worldwide. It's known worldwide. There you yeah. go. Yes. But, uh, you know, so Peter and I have done great things we've had our summer music camp over there and peter yeah. is tremendous and what he does over there i see marcus ledstrom on there hi marcus um yeah. good to see you and uh i've made wonderful friends in sweden because of because peter stepped up he took a chance he brought white cross over to play and that was like 12 13 years ago and yeah. has become one of my very best friends in the whole world so yeah. Yeah. And one of mine too. And I, I appreciate that we have Peter in common. Absolutely. So, yes. He is really a great guy. And um, you know, there's a lot going on. We're we're doing uh Bob Fest this year. I am. And after all of these years, we're gonna I'll do Bob Fest. About that a little bit. I'm not I'm less familiar with it. Yeah. It was the first well, festival. And, and didn't you say even like Leviticus is coming to play that one? Oh yeah. really? Wow. Sure. I know that Vinny Domine is getting back together for it, and of course Narnia and a lot of the bands will be there. But um, yeah, excited for. We haven't done Bob Fest since two thousand five, so this will be kind of a nice reunion. You know, Rex. One of the things that I'm really enjoying with the Immortal Fest and and just this whole resurgence of of the good old music. You know, I think a lot of a lot of young metalheads are learning the history of you know where all this yeah. started. 
Yeah, that was uh, the, the Marvel Fest has been a unique experience in my life, and I'll just talk about that for a minute. Um, yes. Yeah. You know, S Steve Barhorst invited us to come and and play the concert with Bloodgood. Uh, that was a a co-headlining bill um that was like a few years ago yes and the very next day was when uh you know michael bloodgood got sick and yeah. you know and then we lost him later on that year so that was the last concert that he played um and so you know uh what a tremendous loss to our huge christian metal community Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then after that, then uh, Steve came to me and said, "Let's do a um, let's do a concert with White Cross." And I said, "Okay." And then, like a couple days later, I think I'm going to add a couple more bands, and then I think I'm going to add a couple more bands, and then the next thing you know, uh, I, I think I'm going to call it Immortal Festival. <laughs> awesome. you know? That's great. Um, and and I was over, I was over with. Uh, Peter actually, and and I was like, Peter, man, it's like it kills me. It's like I would love to have you over at this festival, and 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 Peter is such a huge Bob Beeman fan, and I, then I'm I'm watching the announcements, and then it shows up on my internet. I like, hey Peter, you got to look at this, and it said uh, just added uh, last minute addition to the festival that you were going to also come. Yes and be a part of it so that was so amazing um and then of course we had the first immortal festival and then um you know and then and then i was able to reconnect with my wonderful friend dorn uh at darth Plummer management and you know had great experience with dorn and uh and you know interacting with all the other bands and um uh and then we have the festival again this year and third year a song on the on our new record that's coming out it's called the way we rock it's the lead off song and in the in the the subtitle of the song it says this this song is for the immortal fest crowd no, so nice. it's for our family and this is the way that we rock you know yes um and you know white cross is uh, by today's standards, people would say, ah, they're not a metal band. They're like a classic, like a dad rock band. You know, in 1987, we were like crazy heavy metal, right? When, yeah. when, oh, yeah. when Striper yeah. first came yeah. out, that was like yeah. cutting edge. Whoa, this is the edge of insanity kind of thing. And now you listen to their music now. It's like, yeah, well, whatever. It's just Striper. We're all, we all know the sound. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, people would probably have the same reaction to White Cross, but we keep raising the bar and and the music just keeps getting better and better and better yeah. and um this is like i agree one of the best albums this is probably um uh, this is probably the most like from top to bottom in a 360 kind of view this is probably the best album from white cross that i've been a part of so yeah you. we're excited to hear it and uh, you know what i regret rex is um you and I have been friends for a long time. I have some great pictures of you and I together from probably 1986, 1987, somewhere. Wow. And uh, I should have put them on the screen next time. Yeah. No, we'll, next time let's do that. We'll, we'll, we'll go down memory lane and we'll pick yeah. something from every decade. Okay. <laughs> that will be awesome. Well, folks, we are coming to the end of our time and, and, uh, Rex, please come back again with us. This has been just a lot of fun. Let's uh, revisit. I'd love to have you back when the album comes out. Absolutely. We'll about that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That would be awesome. Don't forget the concert coming up at Radiant Fellowship and a lot of other things happening. Go yeah. to the, the website. The concerts are all there. You can find out what's going on. Wow. And don't forget to pre-order the yeah. new album. That's yeah, you can get, of course, you can wait until, you know, after the 22nd, the album will be available for everybody. But uh, they're doing a, um, my understanding is that there is a, a pre-sale package right now where you're able to get the, the album. You get an autographed copy of the album. Oh, awesome. Um, and there it is. There's the and then there's the T-shirt offer, 
that comes with it. And it's a special offer. That T-shirt will be collectible because it's going right. to go away. It'll never be released uh, again after uh, the 22nd of March. So it's just a cool collectible fun thing. And that graph there. Is there. Yeah. That's, That's great. Turn around right there. I know there's been a lot of pre-sales that I've told that there's a lot of pre-sales to come in. Good. So we're off to a good start with that. And we are excited for this to happen. To, for it to come out. <laughs> well, Rex, I, I want to thank you for all of your years of service. I, I know I speak for the, the metal community that you are dearly loved and appreciated, but, but I, I appreciate that, uh, you know, I'm a good friend. But I'm also a fanboy. I, I love White Cross, and I love what you guys are doing. And um, looking forward to another great year at the Immortal Fest. Isn't, isn't that ironic? Because I feel the same way. I, I'm part of the movement, but I'm a fan. I'm a <laughs> fan. You know, I just like it. I just love to be part of the scene, and um, you know, the hang out with people just. Just like everybody else. So yes. So Rex, you just gave us a little taste, but would you just play something while you got your guitar? <laughs> You know, nice. I, I can from, tell uh, you've been taking uh, lessons. Riff from one of the songs from the new album, plus awesome. the song, you know, the old Who Will You Follow from our first album. So, you that. know, you know, I can honestly say the first time I had Rex up to at Radiant, I, I thought, now here's a kid that's going to go places if he pursues a career. And I'm glad yeah. he went that route. <laughs> <laughs> I think nice. he would. Nice. I mean, it remains to be seen, but I think you will. Yeah, <laughs> you might make it. All right. Love you guys. Love you too, Rex. Love you very much. You guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to have people from all over the world joining. Again, don't forget to pre-order that album and all the goodies that come with it. Jim Laverti says, hi, Rex. Hi, Jim. Uh, Another one of my dear friends. Darren Cross. And... Uh, who is, I think, sitting in my house right now. But, folks, again, thank you for joining us. Join us next week. Pastor Bob Wise, we've got some great stuff to bring to you. Have a great day.